Alrighty, guys, this is um, Lovely with the Financial Brio podcast. We're going to just do a real quick shorts here. I have Atlanta and Lawrence. We're all three here. Look at us being good citizens to the podcast and showing up. You know, maybe the booze are on vacation. The booze are going to come back. This is Shade to Atlanta, at, of course, just to let you know. Yeah, because obviously... A I, I have a wife and I'd be face. like, I'm in, I'm in the office yeah. <laughs> doing serious things. But, um, but yeah, so this is going to be a really good episode and we just uh, thank you guys. But first of all, thank you guys for listening. Cause we've been writing out, we have over a, a thousand like downloads and I'm like, what? It's just like, wow. We started like in September. So that's actually really, really good. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for the shares, the likes and um, thank you for just everything. We're really appreciative of it. We get paid zero dollars in, in zero cents. So we're really, this is what we call a beautiful passion project. And so thank you for sharing. And we hope that these conversations can help you forge a better life, a better financial um, story, and just be a better person in general. So I'll let my other co-hosts introduce themselves. And I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you're listening. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of TFG, the Financial Grill. I'm another co-host on the side. <laughs> My name is Atlanta Ellison. So I am here. Um, yeah, like uh, Lovely mentioned, we have reached, uh, well, I'm, I won't even say peaked, but it's been over a thousand downloads. Like we, we peaked? My goodness. We, we have been peaked. I, I don't want to say that. Like, I don't want to say that. Atlanta is, is good that. enough for us. We peaked. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got time to cool down. <laughs> So no, 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 no. I don't want to say, okay, scratch that. But thank you guys, man. We're, we're just so grateful and just, you guys are sharing, you guys are reaching out to me on problematic Lawrence, things that we discuss on here. Like the, the conversations are being discussed. And I think that's the main, you know, main point. We just want people to talk. Cause once you start talking, just sharing stories to understand that you are not alone in this, right? Um, we're all trying to figure out and trying to evolve and, and have a better understanding when it comes to ourselves, but um, more importantly, when it comes to just bettering our um, community, right? So thank you guys once again for uh, supporting us. And we are here, Mr. Deva Gonzalez. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm known as well. Uh, my friends call me Law, but ultimately I'm the neighborhood finance guy on the interwebs. You can find me on IG or even on my website. I'm actually getting a lot of views, getting about a thousand views a, a month, which is not enough to get any level of money, but it's still okay for me. <laughs> but I, I like to give a shout out to my AC repair guy who turns out like he hit me up, says, hey, he clicked on it and he listed a couple episodes. I'm like, what? Because he's, he, he's in the emails that we have. I have it in my signature. So he actually ah, listened to it. Gotcha. So I was like, oh, snap. So shout out to him out there in these streets. One day I'll probably start, you know, we don't have any sponsors. So anytime that we get some sponsors, we'll, we'll shout people out. And ultimately, uh, it's been a fun time just sharing our experiences and having conversations with different people. We had our uh, first guest, Coem, um, recently. And it was a fun episode. It's two parts. It's a lot of fun to, to mention. And I also want to give a shout out to my wife. Uh, not because, you know, obviously she's my wife, but ultimately <laughs> because she's been working to put us on the YouTube streets. You know, she's making us, uh, she worked on the back end, making sure everything is there, making sure it's being processed. So, and she's actually, I, I don't know if she's enjoyed it, but she's kind of one of those people that gets bored and kind of needs something to do. And then she kind of just jerry rigs it. So she has it up and running. So thanks again. And you can also find us on YouTube. Woo, on that IG. was a lot. And IG. Oh, yeah, yeah. And IG. Yeah, yeah. We're on Facebook, too. We're on Facebook as well. I just tagged it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We're yeah, everywhere that is true. Now. That is true. Are we on Twitter? No, nah, we ain't on Twitter. We're we on Twitter? Twitter. Oh, I think see, we have a Twitter that. account or we're going to. I think that's part of the conversation. Yeah, we got a Gmail and everything. It's like, it's insane. Oh, we had like, a Gmail. Like, Luther, you <laughs> listening? Like, we have a Gmail. Like, <laughs> we have a fact, Gmail. Luther, I think we're going to personally send this to you so you can email us your like, thoughts. He, he emails it back just, just in the shade. Hey, so, so for Luther, we created a Gmail. They're like, you don't have an email? Okay. <laughs> chilling. You know, we just be chilling. We actually had an email at the time. We just, she's like, whoa, it was like, you're just going to be a guest. Though. You don't have to attack us. Yeah, that's what I told. I'm like, okay, calm down on this message right now. I feel attacked. <laughs> now I got an email. But no, all love, all love. Quorum was amazing. I think we're supposed to collab with them again. So it should be pretty dope. 
but but Lawrence, Lawrence, we're we're gonna today's we're gonna you know jump on Lawrence for good for good stuff. Specifically, it's about something he said or what he did. But today is a good time. Um, you got this opportunity. You've been writing with the um the neighborhood finance guy since 2020, right? Summer 2020. Yes, summer 2020 in July. I've been posting a lot of my articles on the neighborhood finance. We we talk, we cover anything from budgeting, money management uh investing investment tips and one it's it, it's pretty a lot it's a network tracking and there's a whole slew of resources i think i have almost 200 200 blog posts on there which is amazing it's a lot of in a whole lot of drafts <laughs> and on top of that we i have like maybe 40 resources uh, that are free and available for anybody to actually use from budgeting to exactly know what the numbers are to kind of track your your fi- your retirement numbers, your planning number, your investment numbers. I'm like, I'm, I'm pre- giving people free stuff. Uh, so yeah, and because of it, I've been getting a lot of uh, features and as well as opportunities. And I, that's what we're talking about today. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So the question is on the table, what's your hesitancy about taking the opportunity? Because I felt like once I read it, I feel like it would be a great opportunity for a double-edged sword of like being more exposure, but I know it's also a lot of work. So it's like, how's your schedule looking? And do you feel like- okay. you have to- I think that the number signs, I was like, I, I don't understand why this is a discussion. This is where- Yeah, that, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Yes. I think that's the biggest point is like, when you ask God for something, he does deliver. I always notice that's it's what he does. He doesn't deliver it how you want it. It's like, if you ask for five grand, he ain't going to just give you five grand just because it's like some kind of, it's like a miracle street that just pops up in your bank account. That's not how that works. He's like, oh, you want this opportunity. You want this five grand. He almost like weaves it together. Like, oh, one, you want to be seen online. You want to get more notoriety. You want to bring more stuff to your website. And you want this extra 5K. Here's this opportunity for you. And somebody reached out to me and, and sent me an email and said, hey, uh, um, based off your interactions with a previous writer, uh, her name is Nicole Diker. Um, shout out D- to Nicole. Yeah, shout out to Nicole because I worked with her before in a few things. Uh, her last name is um, D I E K E R, and the first name is Nicole. Typical Nicole's. <laughs> so Nicole mm-hmm. Diker out here, um, and she was writing for this organization, and she would co- sometimes hit me up, and she was surprised how fast I kind of like you know like response, and also give her something that she could use, and ultimate or some uh, direction because especially when you're writing a lot you don't get a lot of inspiration so if you get some inspiration you might change the entire trajectory of what you're writing based off what somebody just stated uh ultimately she got a different opportunity to level up and because of it she was asked like hey do you know anybody that uh will be able to kind of fill in for a short period of time while we try to track somebody else to do the same position as you're doing as a freelance writer for us so you actually mentioned me and they reached out to me and they're basically offering as a freelance writer, I think it's $150 uh, per article, um, two articles per day, uh, five days a week. Uh, oh yeah, five days per week. So it ends up being, you know, a, an opportunity that ends up being around like five grand, five grand a month. Like literally the exact number that God, <laughs> like that I asked God for and the opportunities, all that we think together, yeah. So ultimately I've been thinking and sitting on there for a bit because Yes, it's 150, but it is a lot of writing, and I'm a commiserate. Uh, I won't say, per, uh, yeah, per, I'm a procrastinator, a sem- semi perfectionist in how I want to craft a story, and that's why I have a lot of drafts that people have never seen. <laughs> like, I got 50 but that's drafts perfect though, so because you have the foundation for it. So, if it's financial literacy where you have a niche in, you already have the drive, it's not like you don't have the inspiration, plus, you're there's so many parts to this but you want the more exposure you're getting more exposure because it's yeah. a bigger platform so yeah. you're also doing the blog post that you have been doing for a few years this is before your website was launched so there's that right and you also want to reach within this platform in um, getting more extensive reach you want to reach people who are not like we mentioned in previous episodes that are not making the you know 100 K and honestly, you want to reach the, the minimum people who are making, you know, average incomes that the information can be relatable to. Right. So you have this somewhat low key power and opportunity to do so. So what's the problem, bro? 
What's yeah, the yeah, it was, a, it was, I guess it was the money, you know, the idea of freelancing and all that stuff. And at the time I was kind of, I wouldn't say I was busy, but sometimes when stuff hits you, you have to let yourself process it mm-hmm. to see if it's a good opportunity. I have, I, I was thinking about it. I definitely need to respond to them today then. How Either way, good or bad. Reached out? Like three days. Okay, that's not too bad. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Weekend, so you don't yeah, yeah. Too bad. yeah, I'll, I'll hit, I'll hit them up. You know, they don't even know me like that. It's like, like a, is there a buddy, a friend of mine? So <laughs> that kind of thing. But ultimately, the idea is that the opportunity that I asked for was we came into a package that I wasn't uh, expecting. At the right. moment, that I actually, you know, wasn't expecting. Same thing as any opportunity that anybody else would get in their life. It's always going to come like this. When the door opens, you, you kind of have to make a decision. And if you're not in the right financial space, if you're not in the right, you know, moment in your life, you might miss out on it. I think I had to structure in my mind how I want to process it, like either because I have the extra day because I work nine days on and one day off. So it's basically every other week in my job, I get a day off. Every other Friday is an off day. That's really good because then I could probably crank out, you know, a few articles if I'm really just sit there go to a Barnes and Nobles and just kind of knock out articles. And from that point on, I'd be working with a friend of mine, uh, Clee, who would uh, be uh, editing those because he's really good at that. It's one of those things I'd be looking at him like, you're really good at editing. I'm not too sure why you're not in this field because it could really make you a lot of money um, because he, that was like his, it's almost like that's what he kind of pseudo studied, English, grammar and understanding structure. And the fact that he, he doesn't want to do this always kind of troubles me, but maybe it's also a good opportunity for him too, to, to be an editor in this capacity, you know, build his portfolio and we're just kind of all building at the same time. What so did it's kind of, I hear here is this is a, he was excited. Thing. No, he was, no, he was excited. He was the one that hit me up like a couple of times while I'm at meetings or whatever. He's like, Oh man, how long let's do this. Well, what, so, did, what did uh, D say? What did um, Doreen say when you talked to her about it? Doreen was more concerned, like based off capacity. Can I, you know, can I do it? Because she'd probably, you know, on a one-on-one day-to-day basis, you kind of see like, hey, I might either um, do something or my door is closed. But in truth, sometimes I'm procrastinating, just chilling out here in these streets. <laughs> but she, I'd be telling her, but I don't she think she believes this. it. I don't think she, like, when people just think because my door, my door is closed, it's like, hey, Lawrence is being mad productive. But I'm very fast as what I do. And after that, I just kind of just hang out. Like, what do I do in the rest of the time? My brain goes on lapse adjustments and I just hang out. <laughs> like, so ultimately, I think um, adding structure to my life, creating those little uh, parameters would actually help. And it would literally help me and him and ultimately even our own personal brand. Because obviously it's, it's, it revs into the neighborhood finance, which reels back into the financial brio. And I guess you're right. Everybody's right. I, ca- I got to take this opportunity. Hey, if I fail, it's I fail. Pressure, but it's good pressure. I, you know, I think that's part of part of what it is too, lovely. It's pressure. Like, it's that fail, like it's like, oh, am I good enough to write? Am I gonna fail? More and I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of surprised that you you're like this. I guess everyone has their low key insecurities yes. a bit. And yes. you're, you're displaying that a little bit. Cause I'm really surprised. I've, all, I've been. You always get on us about showing up. <laughs> like no, but I'm always I tell people that all the time. I am not a flaw or in perfect about any yeah. stretch that's exactly part of my even like my uh my my wedding vows as far as i think what imperfect. we don't understand is that lawrence is actually human and even though yes. he has all this yeah, bravado true. True. Yes. that true. he is still human true <laughs> yes true you're right you're right sometimes i have to remember that yeah. some people be hitting me up like oh man i, I saw you were up at 6 a.m like yeah you don't know if i just rolled over to the side <laughs> you don't know if i actually did something <laughs> or not like yeah i posted you know like people just think what I do is extraordinary as much more that I haven't been pushing myself in, in total honesty, probably my entire life. As I don't know, I look at other people too, and I tell them that I don't think we are all pushing ourselves to the, the not, not even to the breaking point, because that's not what that point is. It's to the point in which you're fulfilling your ultimate promise and your ultimate purpose to the world. Are you doing the most that you can? Nine times out of 10 on a Saturday, I'm watching, you know, tons of Netflix, kicking it you know, like nine times out of ten you know i'm just sitting there listening to some toxic clubhouse you know probably should not be on clubhouse and listening to toxicity nine times out of ten i'm kind of playing a video game that's taking too damn long like too much time out my day and ultimately then i come back to the oh i didn't get this done only because i wasn't really being very intentional about the use of my time so in truth i could do a lot more 
I just haven't done it. And I don't have, sometimes I don't have the, the, that extra push to say, that's why I'm going to do. That's why we're here. That's why we're discussing this. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, yeah. I legit have a team attacked. I'm listening to Lawrence and I'm just feeling the jabs in my heart. And it's like, yo, I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. Are you doing the most you can with the time you have? No, I'm not. I could definitely for sure be doing more. And for a long time, like um, Lawrence, Lawrence was talking about like being on Google, Google, Googleable, even though that's not a word. Google, Google? Ain't nobody, yeah, it's a word. It's a word. Google it's me, word. duh. Google me. I tell people all the time. We were talking like, about that you last Google, episode. A couple episodes back. I'm like, I don't give. A, I don't give. I don't care. And no lie, like after that, um, that whole thing, I was like doing my meditation, and God checked me, and it was just like, wait a second, did you not say that you wanted to impact people? You want to aspire, especially other women, to to the heights of professional goals that you're talking about, like being one of the first Haitian women to potentially become a billionaire. Like, do you, you, you remember these requests that you were making? Like, and I was like, yeah, what it got to, what it got to do with being known? I just want to like get these, get these goals together. But it was more so like, how can you inspire people from um, being hidden? How could you be inspiring people when you don't want to speak? And I was just like, cause I don't got nothing to say right now. I don't like speaking like that unless somebody asks me and then I could I have like a lot to say. I'll go on a rant after you ask me a question, but I don't necessarily initiate rants. They're typically poked and prom. Then I was just like, man, love, you out here lying to yourself. I was like, what do you mean? Well, simply put, you're asking for one thing, but unwilling to do the things that would actually get you there. So which one is true? Do you want to walk in your purpose or not? Like even this event that we're doing in May and for Atlanta, I, you know how long I was supposed to do something like this? I think I talked, Lawrence, when I talked to you, but we talked about this, maybe like, I probably was still in Florida. <laughs> like It was a long time. And so I'm like, okay, mm, got to do better. Got to do better. I, I, I know I reflect on that a lot. I have my moments, highs and lows, <laughs> for the most part of pushing content out there, uh, being consistently pushing content out there. Um, but I, I feel like I'm just learning slowly and I'm progressing slowly. Like even that conversation we had that one night about SEOs, like Lawrence yep. just gave me a, a, a 10, 15 minute crunch training on SEOs and those little small things that he told me now that you Google my name now, do it right now. If you're on the phone, just Google me. <laughs> but actually when you're typing in my name, Atlanta, A-L-A-I-N-T-A, put the uh, apostrophes on it. And that's how you kind of uh, search and generate the the name or the person and you can find the YouTube. It's the first thing that comes up finally <laughs> and everything else. It, it, it comes up as well. Like the feature podcast I was on CNBC, uh, WLRN about uh, investing. So, and I'm, I'm uh, for me, cause I'm such a visual person and I'm, I like to manifest, I guess. I see that. I'm like, okay, that small thing I did, just changing up the, the verbiage. Yeah. Or being consistent with my Twitter account that matched my YouTube, that matched my IG. And I'm just like, okay, I can do this. But for me, I just have these moments like, huh, no one cares. Why should I care? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, I just like, you it's know, like this is week. free. <laughs> this is free and it's my time. But I have to kind of understand that the, the people that are looking and the people that are searching or want to find this information, I have to put in myself and have the power to consistently do it. Not just when I feel like doing it. I have mm -hmm. to do it when I don't feel like doing it because I don't feel like going to gym, getting up at four o'clock and going five, but I know that I have to do it. And I just have to keep, you know, that mindset <laughs> of doing those things. I could do a lot of productive things to just, mm -hmm. you know, clean up the house, anything that's, you know, out of place or whatever I have to do, you know, meal prep or get ready for the work week. But I have to place that same energy into my passion projects because I really love talking about money. I talk, I love talking about self-development. Our passion project here with uh, TFG is it, it's enjoyable. Like, I just love doing this with you guys. Right. But um, it's, it's actually just sustaining that. So you, you guys are calling me out all these yeah, times. I'm like, but... dang, this one of them episodes <laughs> where I feel like, oh, this is a mirror being pulled up. What's interesting mm -hmm. is you guys remember we started doing the podcast was birthed out of us doing weekly accountability yeah. calls on. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't even start off as, oh, we're going to do this podcast. We're going to do this. They're going to be featured. We're gonna... It started off as just like, hey, we noticed that we want to do better with our lives. And yes, we're doing better, but there's so much more in us. 
and we've been trying to escape, quote unquote, like, ah, like Lauren said, being procrastinators. And it was just like, okay, let's put these things up. Let's have these things. Like I'm personally waiting to read the draft from um, Lawrence. Guys, Lawrence has an ebook coming out um, for 2022. So yes, early yes, yes. quarter one. So yeah, been- I, I need to step up my life, guys. I really do. And I, I think I, I, I think that's the sad part that I know that this could help people. You know, in some way, some form, somebody needs to grab this and, and find it. And I just Googled uh, Atlanta, like you said, with, with the quotation marks. And I found that article that you were featured in, is like how to get your finances back on track. And it was actually written by Nicole Dyker. So you, mean? you like, see how, it, you see how like, it all comes Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, hey, you don't know if that was the article that helped her blow over. And that I, I told her to, because she was writing for somebody else, but she ended up on bank rate. When right. she, because once they kind of have a, because she, she asked me for something, I told her about you, but I think the moment she heard about your story and understood what it was, she was like, I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to actually make this the story. And that way it helped her. Also, it helped you. It helps just everybody because somebody's going to read this, going to help them. So sometimes I tell people all the time, you have to be willing to be the person that's player two, not just player one or player three, or player four, or just the person that supports, endorses, and, and, and moves other people forward. Because I could literally say, you know, when, when the opportunity comes to me, I read it, I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't know nobody, and moved on. Like, if I just think about myself in a centered way, like, oh, that's not me. Uh, all right, Nicole, my bad. <laughs> hey, deuces, do you. And in, 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 in essence, I close that loop. Whereas I could be the conduit that opens that circuit that allows, you know, that energy to flow all the way around. And I think that's what we need to do as an entire community. Just like you, you guys are calling me out. I was like, hey, I thought you were going to take this opportunity. I thought it was a no brainer. The fact that Clee was so hyped about it too. Like he would hit me up, try to like FaceTime. Hey man, how long? I was like looking at him like, chill man, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but he sees the potential and other right. people see the potential in me. And it's just a matter of me being being able to see and fulfill the potential that I was sent to, to fulfill. I don't think people understand how strong when it comes to your net net network of people that you have, um, your you know, first close friends or whomever, your mentor, a friend of the friend, how strong and impactful that is, right? So Lawrence knew Lovely. Lawrence was on Lovely podcast a few years ago. Uh, Lawrence told Lovey about my story of uh, pivoting uh, Korea and, and you know uh, shifting my net my net worth and all that good stuff. I was on Lovely podcast and we became uh, good associates, became good friends, and then all this kind of just eventually came together. Um, and opportunities that comes up, um, I'm sending people to Lovely or I'm, I'm referring uh, Lawrence to someone like there's there's always opportunity when you have that network and that team of people um, in the midst of that e- even with an, another opportunity on on Thanksgiving I think yeah Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving I have another podcast interview of an opportunity that Lawrence told me about and she reached out to me and she's like yeah let's do this so we're scheduled to do it and we have an interview about uncomfortable financial conversations and I'm going to mention about the um, situation with my mom is not being able to afford to retire so it is impactful when you have these people in your lives to to reference you to others and kind of like expand to other people and extend your reach like I cannot you know, articulate that even more, how powerful that is to have that network of people. And, and, and it starts with, you know, just, just you positioning yourself and helping others and showing up, but you have to show up for yourself first. That's how I land my plane. <laughs> I didn't even know that this was something, you know, like who, you know, you can't talk about who it is. You, you can't, you can't let us know who it don't, might don't, be. Don't make me lie. I forgot. <laughs> Damn. I forgot. Um, she, you, but you, but you sent. The, it was on the uh, Facebook group of the uh, POTUS uh, content. Yeah, yeah. You, you sent me a message that someone was looking for. Um, okay, 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 okay. I, 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 I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. That's so dope I just, I, I just reach out. The only thing I can do is, is reach <laughs> out and follow up. If they want, want yeah. me on, they want me on. They don't, they don't. It's like it's, it's no, no thing for me. Yeah. I just did it, no, right? Nice. Yeah. You know, I got, I got, I got to do my PR for TFG, of course. <laughs> yeah, I think part of this isn't such an amazing op- journey all the way through because of the conversations everybody is able to have, but ultimately 
how our lives are still progressing on the back end. So the goal is not necessarily, this conversation works for us. And yes, it, we, we could spread messages out there, but it wouldn't be as beneficial if our lives are self word centered. It's something that uh, Lovely talks about all the time, being centered within yourself, being completely comfortable, knowing where you're going, where, knowing your direction. Because if I was kind of struggling with money or something like that, or struggling with my time, my efforts, I might not be able to take this opportunity um, with the writing. I just probably, I was literally looking at it like, ah, should I? And I'm like, Lawrence, man, you you be out here burning time and effort, just not giving, it, not doing anything. And sometimes, some nights you're just chilling. But it is, this is an opportunity to really stretch yourself, learn to write better, uh, learn to actually uh, gravitate towards better uh, punctuation, getting a little extra editing from my buddy. And it's going to give him uh, extra cash as well. So it's an opportunity all the way around. Yeah, he's getting married soon. That man need that cash. <laughs> you uh, playing <laughs> like, you you play with his cash. Yeah. Like, he's like, yo, you man, hey, 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 hey. Where, like, where's the opportunity, what we doing bro? <laughs> like, I need opportunity money. done. I have a human being I have to take care of. I need you money. know, I got to do all types of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm reaching back out as soon as uh, this conversation is over. That's going to be like that email I draft. I kind of get into light. it. And just green light the sucker. We see where it goes. Like like you said, you never know where it happens. And maybe it ends up being like, well, we already found somebody. I'm like, well, exactly. at least I process through the idea. And hopefully now I get to understand that opportunities comes and go. That's also part of it, too. The process of like timing is everything. Mm -hmm. You don't want to process too long, too. We, yeah. we we talked about that. You don't want to think about a good opportunity too long. It's like you sometimes you can um, overthink or just you overthink and you, you kind of miss out on the opportunity because you're overthinking about what, what would happen or possibly what happened. But you have to, like we mentioned, being centered and understanding presently, this is the opportunity that has been being given to you. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen. The next 10 or 15 articles. We don't even know if they even like your articles enough to say like, eh, well, well, we'll move in a different direction. <laughs> right. So, but you just have to at least attempt and to try. Right at least try and position yourself to say, okay, I'm going to accept this opportunity. Whatever happens, happens. And maybe this may, may not be the one for you, but they'll keep you in mind for something else. So that's, that's all I'm saying. It's in your reach. Have people think about, you know, what you're doing to kind of like explore other opportunities that may be for you. So. Yep. I've been inspired. Um, so to the point that I'm actually going to start um, blogging, the entrepreneurship journey because I'm also thinking about long-term content, evergreen content, because what happens on social media is like after a while, the post means nothing like anymore. Like Instagram's not going to share it, but like blog posts, articles, books, like those eBooks, they're forever essentially, unless you like take it down. So think about it. There are books like that, um, that are quote unquote, like going record that people, those people have been dead for a hundred years and we're still reading them. I'm actually as um, leisure to help my brain with creativity and imagination because I felt like when I was super young, I used to read books and as I was reading them, they used to feel so vivid that I felt like I was watching a movie and I would be like, man, what show was I watching? And then just to realize, oh, you're reading a book. That's just how vivid my imagination have, was. And I realized I lost that element. And so for what I'm about to do, I need to be creative. I need to be free. I need to be able to not to be restrained. So I'm actually rereading the Harry Potter books on um, my Kindle and literally picturing the things like how I used to as a kid and just tapping into that youthful um, essence. And it goes back to trying to be better and trying to explore and push ourselves. And I don't want to lose my imagination because I want to leave you guys with this is sometimes because we haven't, we've, we kind of feel like we've come so far like everything seems like a big deal. And then sometimes because we've come so far, nothing seems like a big deal. Cause you're like, eh, I don't know how long this is going to last. And you kind of like push it, but imagination and hope and faith are things that we should definitely hold on to. You guys are going to hear me talk about these things all the time, because when you, your brain doesn't really know the difference between what you're actually thinking and what's happening. The brain, like neuropathically wise, don't know. Like if you just start imagining things, they don't differentiate. Oh, this is really happening. That's how when people get out of nightmares and they had like, they were dreaming that bugs and they start hitting themselves. Why? Because the brain does not really know the real and not. So when you tap into the imagination, that's how you pull things from your imagination into, your real, into real life. So imagine yourself different, being more productive, being a better person, doing these things. And you start to see that you start to manifest those behaviors. And so for me, I've just been so happy like, even though it's tough, like, since I wake up every morning, like, so happy, 
Like it's like the weirdest, not the weirdest thing. I just be like, man, I'm grateful to have this problem. I'm grateful to have this obstacle. That part. I know what I want to accomplish. I imagine myself like owning this company and creating a space that people can work and that they're actually happy to come to, that they're excited to come to because we, we are the company that ideas come to thrive. We are the company that people that have great passion projects and ideas, we are the space that you come to make your imagination come to real life. Like I want to be the Disney world of entrepreneurship, like in business building where people can come and literally dream up something. And we provide them the tools and the resources to bring what's in their brains to life, whether it's writing a book, whether it's literally creating a whole new product or whether it's, you want to, you know, be the first new solar power phone. I don't know. We want to be the place that those things come to thrive. And so every day I wake up, I'm like, this is what I want. This is what I want to be able to walk into this building or have a virtual, like a a quote unquote metaverse of business building. I want to, I think about these things and it's exciting, even when I don't know like how the heck all of this is going to happen and how is all of this is going to come to to, um, fruition. And you have all these obstacles. I wake up every morning, genuinely like, dang love, you're going to do this lovely. You're going to, this is going to be your reality. Even if right now it doesn't seem like that. And that's why I keep doing it even when it's tough. So I just encourage you that's listening to this podcast, imagine yourself different. Like if right now you're in a state of poverty, you're in a state of mind that's um, poorish, imagine being happy. Imagine finding someone that actually likes you, that loves you, that you're doing life with. And eventually, guess what? Your toxic boyfriend seems like he got to go. You'd be like, let me help you pack your bags because my imagination and my hope and my faith is not matching up with your the picture that I have right now. That's how you change your life. It starts in your mind. It starts with the belief system. It starts to be in your heart and boom, it happens. Um, And get friends that's going to say, hey, where is this draft? Where is this draft? You, Lawrence. Then he gonna tag me like, nah, don't tag me. Nah, <laughs> like, she's she not talking to me. I'm minding defuse, my business. I defuse, don't tag I me. Like, hey, what about Atlanta? What about Atlanta? Nah, don't and tag her, me. Her uh-uh. he, she, she, she talking about you. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what did I do? You. I'm and getting the tag is, and post. I have to had um message Lawrence like early in the week because I'm like I, I, he usually. No, I saw. Me. I saw. I tried to delete it off my calendar. Oh. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I used to try to move stuff out. I'm like, what the hell? I can't. Oh, it's not my no. Nope. <laughs> delete nope. off my calendar nope. I, I don't i don't need this level of toxicity on my calendar delete <laughs> like, well, you, should, you, you, you should want to have people in your circle in your life that just push you to be better right you know what's, and, well, and see, that's what's see, funny and see the greatness in you you know but i think that's what's funny because i'm usually the one that do that for others so i'm very much not used to it being done oh. to me yep you see i mean i've usually the the other the complete other way around everybody else is like not performing per se and i'm actually doing something so for i also that's another thing i I try to talk to my friends about too is that when we judge each other based on each other so if the other person is not doing anything we're like oh i'm doing a little bit more than that guy but you could also be all performing in mediocrity you know because if somebody barely got up in the morning and oh yeah he he went on a three mile uh, uh, run. The other guy's like, oh, well, I, I, I haven't done it in a in month. I haven't worked out in, in a year. It, eventually you end up in a, in a group of people that don't do anything. So everybody in the group does, it's not one person leading the group or pushing a group. Everybody has to be pushing each other. Yeah. That's the only way you succeed. Right. And that's quite why I gotten bored the last however 30 years of my life. I was bored because nobody else has been pushing me. Mm. Yeah. Now we're on your butt. Hey, All where's right. the graph? Please email. All right. I'll be I'll be sitting in the corner like la 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 like nobody paying attention. <laughs> like, nah, but it's good. This is good. This is a good episode. I hope you guys enjoy listening to us and I hope you get inspired to do whatever's on your heart. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. We are in 2021 right now. There are people freaking 40 years ago. We have the internet. Do you guys understand, like, whether you like M1, Rob, what is it, Robin Hood? Is it Robin Hood? I think that's what his name is. It's Robin Hood. Yeah, it's Robin Hood. What are you? Okay. I can't remember. And then there's It's a brand name. Yeah, all these different things. Do you understand the type of access we have right now? Like, wasn't available. People had to, like, go to, like, the bank and do all the stuff that they didn't have. And it was a requirement of how much money you had to have. And if you weren't even making a certain amount of money, that wasn't taking your dollars. Like, these, this centralization of what it is to build wealth, what it is to have knowledge. Like, you legit can, like, 
you want to know like about Harvard, right? Like people, I believe school, you can take one of their courses without paying anything. Like these things that quote unquote are like, so before used to be like, there's this red tape, hear me and hear me clear. TikTok is cool and all, Instagram is cool and all, but you are in the generation that has every information that you can possibly think of at the fingertips. Like you can read your way out of poverty. You can read your way into a better life. Like literally like nutritionists are on Instagram sharing what, like how you should eat better. Like this is stuff that before people had to pay thousands of dollars to sit with someone to really help them structure these things. And these things that we call out, they were like red tape. I just want to inspire you to understand what generation we're living in. As much as there's a lot of stuff that's happening that's really hurtful and really bad, I want you guys to get the level of opportunity that we're sitting in. Yes, I'm not saying the system is perfect for us that are people of color. What I'm saying though is you don't even need them right now. You literally are people, people now you can have a, a, like a work from home job and nobody ever see your face. You can be working, just like typing away and doing your thing. Like, Guys, we live in a generation that you can really dream up a different life. Do not take that for granted. Please don't. I'll, I'll just end with that. There's so much I'll, you us to. And I'll, I'll echo that and I'll, I'll end as well. It, the fact that it's so easy to be, um, I guess, the, an expert in any field in today's date because the opportunities are endless and are available on your cell phone. They're on the Google search. They're on and available, not even in your library anymore. Remember the library you had to go, you had to figure out yeah. how to use the library. You had to go, like, you had to go through, I don't remember. It was you, have to show proof. you had to show proof that the address matched wherever you are to get the library like, card. I like, remember. No, shit. no, no. How to sort, how to sort through the, remember you, you need, I had to sort through this library. Like, you don't know where stuff is. And they're, they're like, oh, you have to go through this little fish thing. You got to. What do you call it? Bibliotech thing? Bibliotech, yeah, bibliotech yeah, thing. Or like yeah. somebody had to look, you got to go blind looking through some stuff. I don't even know what was going on in the library. It was always so the dark we, in there. So the moment it got on the internet, I was like, man, this is amazing. And to and I just, just Googled that too. It's like the average American reads um, 12 books per year. I'm like, I don't even think we read that much books a year, to be honest with you. Majority of people read that. And who's Facebook. the average? <laughs> like, they, they read the Facebook. But if you actually want to be, um, be, be uh, I guess, above average, just read 12 books a year. And if you read 12 books a year for even five years, you're going to become an expert of everything. It's just the way it works. Just read, just apply, just start allowing your brain to process and uh, um, allowing the challenges to come your way so the opportunities to come as well. So with that said, that's where I land with my statement. Lawrence, the neighborhood finance guy, go on my website, please. I haven't been able to get any money. I get money from clicks and I've been on since Ju uh, July, 2020. And uh, they don't pay me out until I get a hundred dollars. <laughs> Just like you guys know that. And the, the tab right now is like $50. I, I'm literally not getting paid guys. That's please oh, like, click on this damn website. <laughs> Click, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> like or something. <laughs> Man, just double down on everyone. This is great, great, great episode as well. Just only if you haven't taken anything what we said today, just do as much as you can with the time that you do have. Our time here is limited. And I want people to understand that if you have an idea, if you have something that you want to start to do, then you are your your biggest creative. Like you can place it out there, uh, do the push and just position yourself to allow opportunities to come to you right opportunities don't happen to people at our standstill just in their house watching netflix they happen to people that actually put in the work right um i won't be in, in a lot of positions or in, in the same rooms or conversation of my name coming up if i didn't position myself or i didn't share my story and so in a lot of time it just start off with just sharing you know um so you can find me on youtube and i'm also on um ig which is, it's Atlanta, I-T-S underscore Atlanta, A-L-A-I-N-T-A. -A. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of The Financial Grio. And we out. Thank you for listening to The Financial Grio podcast, powered by the Wealth Builders Collective.